showing your love and support. I haven't gone away. I'm right here. Uh, uh, my friend, I haven't gone away. I'm not going away anywhere. We are part of the same struggle for human rights, justice and peace all around the world. That's why we're here today. That's what we're here today. And how are you doing? And I want to say thank you to all of you for being here tonight. Thank you for this wonderful platform we've got here tonight. And thank you for the joy and the verve of the carnival atmosphere and promoting carnival in support of Julian. Because you win campaigns by gaining friends. You gain friends by going out in an exuberant, musical, artistic way, as well as the very strong, very powerful, intellectual and legal arguments that we've got to pursue. You have to campaign on all fronts, at all levels, all of the time, to win justice for Julian Assange. And that is what we're doing. of most of the British media that they've completely ignored the whole issue. They don't seem to understand that one of the biggest media stories in the world was going on literally within a few metres of some of their offices when the court cases were going on and no doubt there will be many court cases in the future. They do not seem to understand that Julian's vilification by the US government by the British government and by many others, is part of a strategy to divide people away from understanding what he's about and supporting his case. Julian's crime, so-called, was to tell the truth. Tell the truth about what US military power actually means. To tell the truth about what oppressive governments of all sorts do against their opposition. To tell the truth about the way in which big business is more interested in exploitation of the poorest countries in the world than preserving or protecting the environment or the human rights of the people that live in different places around the world. So Julian's message and the information was of crucial importance to good, decent people all around the world standing up for human rights and justice. But in the silencing of Julian, and that's what it's all about, it is also, in effect, the silencing of real journalists all around the world. Self-censorship takes over following the imprisonment of Julian Assange. The freedom of Julian Assange is the freedom for every real journalist all over the world to report the truth of what is really going on. And so it was, to me, a, a quite uh, moving experience when I was invited to go to Washington last month to join in the Belmarsh Tribunal that we held in the National Press Club in Washington. National Press Club within a few metres of the White House, of Congress and all the great institutions of the USA. And it was that place, that building, that room where Julian showed the footage of the US uh, commanders instructing people to be killed without checking who they were, what they were, to, and it, they, we believe, knew perfectly well they were wholly innocent civilians that were killed by high technology power. In this case, it was Iraqis, but it could also be Afghan people, it could also be Somalis, it could also be Yemen, it could also be Palestinians, it could be people in all sorts of places in the world. But Julian's skill and brilliance helped to expose the vile nature of what um, control actually means. And he showed it in that room, and that is why we had this event in the National Press Club. It was packed out, and it was live streamed to a lot of people all over the world. And whilst the British media and most of the British political establishment and elected politicians are not saying a great deal about Julian, it is not the case elsewhere. My good friend Andres Manuel López Obrador, the President of Mexico, spoke out from the very beginning on this. And when I was in Mexico with him in January, last January, we uh, went to the Manera, his daily press conference, and he then dedicated 
a large chunk of his daily press conference to Julian's case. Raised it directly with Biden and offered Julian, if he wanted it, sanctuary in Mexico. And because he set that example, others have joined in. And it was wonderful to see Lula Ignacio da Silva elected as president of Brazil and straight away to come out in support of Julian Assange. So you have, you have the presidents, you have the presidents of two very large, very important populist countries of Latin America. You also have the support of President Petro in uh, Colombia and many others. So we are building up international support and the campaign in the United States, in Australia, in Europe and many other places is very important. Yeah. And last month at the Council of Europe, where, which I'm a member of in Strasbourg, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, the, we had an event for Julian. I was not expecting it to be so successful. Absolutely rampacked to hear what Stella and others had to say. And that evening there was an event in the National Theatre in Strasbourg, absolutely full also. People want to hear Julian's story. They need to hear Julian's story. The personal story, stuck in this horrible place of Belmarsh Prison, isolated unable to act in any kind of normal way, and he is a remand prisoner. Normally remand prisoners are either released on bail or given pretty good conditions in order to await any kind of process. Julian is a remand prisoner in the most awful conditions, in the most maximum of maximum security prisons in this country. And then, if, if, he's allowed to be removed to the United States. He will face a 175 year prison sentence, a death sentence, because that is what it is. It's up to us now, around the world, to raise the voice for Julian, and in raising that voice for Julian, we're raising the voice for truth, for peace, and justice around the world. And you know what? This campaign is long, it's hard, it's detailed, and it's enormous pressure on Stella and all those that are central to this campaign. So put your arms around them, give them the support and love they need and deserve, and put your arms around everyone else to get them to join in this campaign, to free this innocent man, that the truth may be told of the way in which the poorest and most oppressed people in the world are treated. And I'll finish with this. When all the horrors of 9-11 happened, followed by the invasion and occupation of Afghanistan, trillions and trillions has been spent on military expenditure. Billions has gone into the war in Afghanistan. The troops and the military have now been withdrawn. And what's left behind? The poorest, most devastated place with the greatest denial of human rights of almost anywhere in the world. Military solutions don't usually work. It has to be about understanding the paranoia of those in power to protect their power, irrespective of the cost on innocent people who have no one to speak out for them. Julian spoke out for the innocent victims all around the world of unaccountable military power. Thank you, Julian, for all you did. Thank you for all your support for this campaign. Let's get Julian out. Thank you.